If we, you don't come, we lost money. The restaurant charged us the same money, whether you come or not. <laughs> okay. So we have the car, we have to uh, Somehow we lost a huge amount of money. So, so make sure you Okay, so we we'll start with the next talk by Chester Cho, uh, New Localized Motor uh, Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'll probably uh, be more disorganized than uh, usual because of the jet lag, I'm sorry. Uh, so, So I'd like to uh, explain this formalism, uh, which in this talk will be in two parts. So first is a localized one, and then the second part is how to globalize this, uh, this formalism. And what we try to do is, suppose we have given a general you know, syntax manifold, and, and just let's assume that there is one Lagrangian sub manifold, then uh, we can study the the square algebra of this Lagrangian sub manifold, like then uh, like formal uh, Markovian equation and so on, so that uh, so this we can associate some this uh, formal version of F square O Uta Uno potential to this potential function and on some domain. So the domain is M1 and with this value in lambda. Uh, so this is defined on the Markatan solution space counting some chromatic disks. And then uh, this localized mirror formalism uh, provides a functor from the original Kai category, so let's call this M, oh, no. <laughs> X, from Kai category of X to the matrix factorization of this potential function. And this is an infinite functor. So this is localized version of the story. So see that, uh, so I mean, this general symplectic manifold contains many Lagrangians, so we can choose so other Lagrangians, like L2, right? And this will define another this, uh, FO potential function. And then uh, we also have this kind of canonical functor from category of x to matrix vector addition category of 2, and so on. So this, in the second part, we'd like to study, so, how, so what's the relation of these two functors? Right? So maybe it's better to write this functor here, because the domain, domain of the uh, functor is the same, right? The same category, but it maps to some of two different matrix factorizations. And what we want to do in the second part is to glue, glue the mirror, and then glue the functor, and so on. Okay. So the. <coughs> okay. All right. So. So first, uh, it looks like mirror functor. Uh, maybe. Uh, let me briefly uh, recall what is the FO potential function. So, so the A be an infinite category. Uh, this is filter, uh, unital, uh, integrated, uh, infinite category. And then uh, just choose some object. L, uh, which is an object of this engine category, then this home LL is an engine algebra. So this is an engine algebra. 
then uh, over time on oh, no. studies the marker time equation of this NK algebra. So, so, so marker time equation uh, actually weak marker time equation. So this is nothing but uh, uh, equation of following time and of exponential of b is equal to w of b times the unit. Okay, so what is exponential of b? Exponential of b is just 1 plus b plus b tensor b plus so on. So this is a cyclic version of the exponential function. And Okay, so what this really says is the following thing. So what's this, what does this notation mean? It means, if, you, if it's 1, it means it's n0, 1. So this is no input and just an output. So we are looking at the image of a homomorphic disk. And the second term is m1, b. So you are looking at the image of a homomorphic disk with one output, one input, b, and one output. Then M2BB, which is, and so on. Right? So it's kind of uh, looking at the image of all possible holomorphic disks with these insertions of disks. And this marker time equation somehow wants this to be uh, a multiple of a, of a unit. So that means. It actually means the other, I mean, it means that there are no other uh, contributions. So actually, uh, one, it's better to think about this Markatan equation as some kind of cancellation relation. So there are many kind of disks around, and somehow they all cancel out. And the only output you get is this uh, fundamental cycle times uh, some coefficient, and the coefficient is denoted by W. Okay. And so the good thing about this Markatani elements is that you can deform the NK algebra. So this NK, you can deform NKB. So NKB, so NKB roughly uh, can be defined this way. So it's you are going to insert these all possible way. Uh, so in terms of this drawing, you have this x1 through xk, and the output here. Then you, you insert these everywhere, and then take the all possible sum. Okay, so that's that's the definition of MKD. And then this again defines an NK algebra. And the good thing is that the Markatan equation is that this M0 P is either 0 or WB times identity. And this, this implies that actually M0, when M0 equals 0, that means M1 is paired equals 0, or it defines homology. So, so this is usually called obstruction, and obstruction vanishes, either vanishes, or it's a multiple of a unit, then we still have this uh, differential, so that we can define homology. All right, and so a little bit of notation, so you can also see, so these bs are, uh, can actually use different b. So these can be b0, these can be b1, and so on. These can be bk. Right? And then the location I will use is something like b0, blah, 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 bk. So you can use k plus 1 different r equal chains, I mean the Markatan elements to deform the same. All right. So that's uh, the theory of Kyle and Ono. And so you use this to define for homology theory for general numbers of manifolds. So now, uh, what is uh, so localized mirror function? Uh, 
what we do is, uh, uh, anyway, so this all talk is a joint work with Hansel Hong and Xiu Chung Lao. Uh, so, uh, so we choose uh, these uh, elements of in the odd form space. And then take a linear combination with this formal variable x i. So these are kind of pure variables. And the total degree should be r. So this is r, then this would be even variable. So x i is an even variable. And then uh, we study the Markov tile equation. So m of e to b. Now it's b is a, has this variable x i. So this uh, this p now this w will be will be a function of x i. Okay. Then uh, so let m be the the solution space of Markov tile equation. As I said, uh, it's kind of is given by all the cancellation relations of this N, the NK operations of these. Then there is this canonical uh, NK quanta uh, from, from the original category A to matrix factorization category of W. And how is quanta defined? So let's call this FL. It's, it's kind of a uh, curved lambda on top. What I mean is, given an object k, you just send it to the home home with this this, this object. So take this form of k and l defined by b, and then uh, we want it to be a matrix factorization. So that Actually, has this, this additional map M1 0 B. Okay, so it looks a bit technical, but what it means is so this this is a random flow series. So here we have K, and here is our pre prefix Lagrangian L. Then the home space, if they are transpose, then they are generated by intersection points. And intersection points are they oriented, they are kind of G-to-graded. So they are kind of G-to-graded. So let's assume that this is uh, even and this is odd. And then uh, we count the flow differential, but it's not just standard differential, it's kind of defined by B. So what we do is we allow the insertion of these. Okay. So the counting counting will have the coefficients given by this axis. So the counting is not a number, it's kind of a function of x size. Okay? All right, so, so the modules, so what, what is the corresponding matrix factorization? So, the, so we have these modules P0 and P1, which is generated by, I mean, this, on this polynomial link, it's generated by this even intersections and odd intersections, and the, this uh, module map is given by counting, which is kind of reads the decoration by these, right? And then uh, this functor can be uh, this can be made into an infinite functor. For example, if you have k intersection k prime, then the corresponding picture would be something like this. So this is k, this is k prime. And this is L, and where you insert these, and then so this point P will will send this intersection to this intersection. So that's kind of a sending module to modules, and which is kind of compatible with this matrix equation structures. Anyway, so that can be made into an NP functor, just like Yoneda embedding. Okay, and 
this just in case you happen to say this before. So let me briefly give you one simple example. Uh, so this is the three punctured sphere. And so we consider Seidel Lagrangian. This type of Lagrangian is first considered by Seidel in the study of genus to cut near symmetry. And so this is L. And we call this X. Okay, let's call this X, uh, Y, and Z. Okay. And then uh, so W is going to be just counting of this polygon. So this and in fact, you should have some t to the area, but I'm going to kind of ignore in this talk uh, just for simplicity because this is exact, so you can ignore in this case. And then, uh, so how do you obtain this? Uh, well, so we look at all kind of polygons with insertions of these, and the output is a multiple of units, so you just choose a generic point and it Take an intersection. So choose a generic point, and then, and then the counting will be W of B. So, so this is the count. So you don't you don't count the, the triangle in the back side because it doesn't intersect this generic point. Only count the in the front one. But then it should be independent of this point P, right? So if you move move this point to the back, the counting changes. So if you, this point goes to the back. You, you have to count the triangle in the back side. And you want the potential to remain invariant. So uh, somehow that forces that the triangle you get is kind of uh, have the same side, the back side and front side have the same same area. That turns out to corresponds to this Marukatan equation. Uh, except one technical uh, Thing, which is that somehow if this point goes to the back side, then the counting, the sign of the counting be becomes minus. So what you have to do is you have to kind of equip this Lagrangian with minus one polynomial uh, uh, complex line bundle. But uh, maybe let me skip this. Anyway, so so that's how just counting this triangle we get this potential function, and then uh, in the thumb top. So you just choose this Lagrangian, k, k, so this is k, then what you get, so, okay, so this is x, x, y, z, and if you have k, k, then there are two intersections, one is, I don't know, one is even and one is odd, and then there are two uh, strips, so we regard this as a strip with uh, insertion of these. So these these are both regarded as a strip. So we have p plus, p minus, and the count with decoration, which is given by y, and count with decoration given by x and x times z. Okay? And if you're if you want more complicated thing, then you can do something like this. I'll give this to you as an exercise. Then there are four intersections. That's p plus one, p plus two, q, uh, p minus one, p minus two, and then so we get kind of two by two matrices, p plus and p minus, and then you count, you kind of count these kind of triangles, then you get two by two matrix factorizations of x, y, z. Times identity matrix. Uh, let me quickly. Uh, anyway, so I'll leave it to you. <laughs> I can do it, but uh, I don't have enough time. So, so the idea is, I mean, the matrix factorization, of course, try to factor factor the polynomial into two pieces in terms of two matrices. Sorry, just to make sure I understand. 
So K is an object, so if it were an obstructed Lagrangian, it would have its own set of Bs that you Right, right. So, yeah, uh, thank you. So, you can restrict this to the entry area whose potential value is lambda, right? So, so this is kind of the case when this is zero. We are not different here, right? So, you, you can add like B0 here. So you can, you can go to lambda, then it will go to something like this. So, so usually if pi category has kind of different potential values and they, they are kind of disjoint categories, right? and then each each level goes to the corresponding level of the matrix of And right, so if you decorate by this B0, you just put B0 here. Okay, uh, so the idea is very simple. So, so the potential function is given by counting of disks, and then this, this Lagrangian somehow factors the disk into several pieces. And, and if you come back to diagonal, that means somehow it come back to the original, di original polygon. If, if it's off diagonal, then it kind of cancels out, something like this. But in, well, this is the picture in, in one dimension, but in, in higher dimension, you have to think in terms of flow theory, and this, so this somehow still works well. So let me, uh, as a remark, let me mention that this technique can be generalized. So first, uh, can it's the compactified version, uh, which means uh, I mean, it's, it's G mod A, G mod B, G mod C, orbifold. Then the mirror will look like x to the A, y to B, z to the C, minus sigma x, y, z, and actually many, many higher order terms. Then uh, you can play the same similar game. Then you can prove mirror symmetry in certain cases. And so, improve homological mirror symmetry, uh, which I guess, I mean, which uh, is an equivalence of these two things. And, all right. And then you can well, do the case of several Lagrangian sub manifolds. So, this, as L, you can just choose L1 union, L2 union, and LK. Then uh, the home space somehow looks like a quiver, right? So now the vertices corresponding to LK, and then and then these odd morphisms, odd morphisms become the arrows. Okay, so we, we get some kind of quivers, and uh, and then you get a functor. In this quiver, go to quiver representations or quiver representation. Uh, or matrix factorizations of uh, potential function in Kiva as well. Okay. And then uh, the third generalization is similar, but it's, it's also there is non-commutative non uh, version where we kind of regard these exercise as non-commutative variables. Then there are kind of interesting stories. Then like, you get this kind of uh, Scalioni algebras as as Marcatan, uh solution space in the elliptical case or some deformation quantizations and so on. Anyway, so it has interesting applications. Uh, so one thing, one property of this functor is that somehow we have some some type of injectivity. So anything which uh, I mean, so home with this kind of reference object goes injectively, but we do not have subjectivity. I mean, so but not subjectivity. So so. 
So usually for, for such activity, you, we need an argument developed by Abu uh, like the generating criterion and so on. Anyway, OK, so that's, that's what this gives. All right, uh, so that's uh, the brief explanation of the localized picture. And then now we want to globalize. Globalize. So suppose we have this impact manifold X. There is two Lagrangians L1 and L2, and then uh, we have this mirror WL1, WL2, going from uh, U1. So let's assume kind of exactness saves us, and then so that we can walk on C. So the, old, the chart, uh, this is roughly C, C, CN, or I mean, no, oh, this is the, mm, anyway, uh, the Markov convergence space. And suppose we can uh, work with C. <coughs> and, and now what? Uh, right. So, so recall that U1 is a, is Markatan solution space of L1, some kind of formal deformation space of L1, and U2 is a formal deformation space of L2. So we, and then what we want to do is we want to compare U1 and U2. So the, so the first question we want to answer is how to compare U1 and U2. So if you have U1, then what you want to do is you want to restrict to U2. U12 and maybe U21, and then you want to identify. Okay. So that's question one. So how to identify the Markatan space of different Lagrangians? Space one, two. Okay, and the question two uh, is how to. So suppose we can identify u one and u two so that uh, so that this potential actually agrees. So w restricted to u one two w one restricted to u one two equals w two restricted to u two one. Okay, then this would define kind of global lambda Ginsburg model. So this gives global LZ model. And then, uh, so this localized mirror functor gives, okay, let's see how some form of category of X. So there is this uh, localized mirror functor FL1 to matrix factorization of W1. L2 to matrix factorization of W2. And then uh, we want to restrict to the common intersection. So MF of W1. Okay, and then you compose. So let's call this. Restriction composed with F L1, and this, this one restriction of composed with F L2. And then the question is whether they are quasi isomorphic as functors. So I mean, so restriction composed with F L1, restriction composed with F L2, quasi isomorphic. Let me recall that the definition of quasi isomorphism of functors. So somehow, the, when you, suppose we have an object K here. Uh, the object going this way, and object go, I mean the, the image going this way, could be different. But the quasi isomorphism of functors uh, require that there are some natural transformations between these two. So there is a 
It's a natural transformation n1 and n2. So they ID like this natural transformation n1 and n2. Uh, that the composition of natural transformation is again a natural transformation. And two is homotopic to identity and N2 compose N1 is homotopic to identity. So, so what we want is when after we restrict, we want to compare functions and want to show that they are isomorphic as natural, I mean, uh, post isomorphic as functions. The question three, Uh, then uh, at the end, what we want to do is so this uh, we want to well this is a kind of uh, we have a global matrix like the Wittsburg model and this is kind of local data of matrix factorizations these group to a global data of matrix factorization so we want to find some kind of AQ functor so global version of global MF. Use, use all this data to conserve this kind of one explicitly. And then, uh, so later, so I'll show you how to answer uh, one, two, three, uh, at once. Uh, if you assume, I mean, from some. Uh, data. Okay, but uh, just to have an idea, so of the question one, so what we want is this kind of, we want to identify the Markatan solution spaces. So let, let me, so intuitive, show you this intuitive approach to question one. So uh, let me look at the this, uh, four functions here. Well, the mirror symmetry for four functions here has been studied by Abuzaid and then uh, Heatherly, uh, Buckland, and maybe several other people. Uh, but uh, somehow our approach is a bit different from their approach. Uh, so, okay, so what we want to do is, okay, so the rope, this L1 and L2, we want to choose it to be this uh, immersed Lagrangian here. So this is L1 and this immersed Lagrangian here. Uh, if you have, I mean, uh, so this 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 Lagrangian somehow wraps around. So this is a circle, kind of uh, uh, mapping to this. Uh, like this so it's an inversion. And then, uh, so as before, we have this Markatan uh, solution, which is given by. So there is this x. Uh, let's put let's put this x, y, and z. Uh, so in the dual corresponding variables are small x, small y, small z. So which uh, is an element in C3. And here we have variables x prime, y prime, and z prime. So corresponding dual variables are x prime, y prime, z prime in C3. And then uh, somehow we want to compare these two. So if you have a torus vibration, then of course you can just move the torus vibration to compare the Markatan spaces. But this one uh, somehow is kind of is attached to, to this edge. So if you want to go move this guy to here, you have to somehow do the surgery. So okay, so this is what you do. Okay, so so this is x, x uh, here, and then we do the we consider the following. Uh, Lagrangian, 
And then, uh, so remember that whenever we have this kind of uh, prolonged polygon, we count the mirror variable x. So we need uh, some corresponding object when there is a polygon here. So what we do is we put we put uh, this line on the L, and then we put a uh, polynomy uh, given by x, so x in C star. So what this notation means is along the curve we have this complex line bundle and you kind of twist by modification of x. At this point. So this uh, can be in C, but this is a polynomy, so it has to be in C star. So if you, after you do the surgery, somehow you lose the point zero. And the same, same with here, so you have to go like this. And this is holonomy, so if, if, you, if, you, if you travel opposite world, opposite way, then what you get is, is what you get is x inverse. Right? Okay, so you do the surgery, then so you do the surgery, then and then push, then here what you get what we get is this kind of circle. Maybe I'll draw it in bigger picture. So we get this. So after surgery. We have this uh, variable here going down x, and we have this variable, this holonomy here going up x. And the variable here is y, and this is uh, y. OK, let me mix a small and <laughs> capital letters. It's very confusing for you. But, uh... All right. So note that the potential is still this is x, y, z. Here, if you count this disk, maybe put a generic point here in the count, then you still get x, y, z. So, so w is still x, y, z. And you can, we can also do the surgery here. Then what we get is similar picture. So this one now uh, going up. This one going up. This one going down. So this is uh, x prime. This is uh, x prime. this way. Okay. And this is y prime. And this is z prime. Okay. And the potential is x prime, y prime, z prime. And so if you just push, then somehow the location of this this uh, holonomy change. Is different, right? So what you need to do is you push, but also you need to change gauge. So you need to change gauge. So it's, it's a kind of flat connection, but you just need the connection so that the the point where you uh, the, this holonomy changes kind of moves moves to the back. So this I will move this guy different color. Move this guy to here. Oh, sorry. And then uh, we'll move this guy to here. Okay. But let's do it one, one by one. So if you move this to here, so if you do the kind of gauge change of Lagrangian flow theory, then what you get is an isomorphism of flow complexes. So what you do here is all flow, flow theory. So when you move this guy to here, what happens is you get an isomorphism of flow complex. Uh, so isomorphism actually only does, so the, the change only involves this variable where this chromic goes over. So suppose we keep we keep this guy here and we move this guy to the other side. This would be pointing upward. And then now the variable here I'll denote it as y tilde. Somehow, the isomorphism kind of changes the generator of this uh, flow complex, and this is still there. 
Okay, and our generic point is p here. Now, potential becomes y tilde z. Because now there is no holonomy on this disk, so it's y tilde z. So, and because they are a kind of isomorphic, the potential should be the same, and from here you can see the relation. So x, y, so y tilde is actually x times y. Okay, and we play this game one more time. So we move this guy to the back side, and we move this guy to, to let's erase this, it's confusing. So move this to here, then what we get is something very close to this, but uh, this is x pointing downward. This is x. Uh, this is x pointing upward. Okay, and this z becomes z tilde, and z tilde also z tilde is also x times z. You can check, and then now we compare x and x prime. So they are in opposite direction. So we get x prime equal one over x. So what we did is we kind of do the surgery and we kind of push and compare the Marukatan spaces and we get this kind of natural identification of uh, mirror variables. So at the end what we get is this change of variable, which is x prime is one over x, y prime is x y, z prime is x y. So this is Conclusion. But in fact, uh, there is more freedom. But, but the, the freedom is actually we have just moved this guy to the other side, but actually we can just keep rotating several times to go here. Then this will bring different isomorphisms. This passes through here, passes through here, passes through here several times to go here. So now if you do this, and you can also do this, and then so. The general form, form of coordinate change is the following. So x prime is 1 over x, y prime is x1 plus a times y, z prime is x1 minus a times z. And then you can check that this is actually a coordinate change in polycolabia. So this is coordinate change. And all right, so in so toric labials are given by so if this is level one hypersurface, then hyperplane, then uh, suppose you have a simplex here. So the first corresponding to the first XYZ, then the next one you can choose it to be any simplex. Uh, like of this form. So, so this, this choice of simplicial data corresponds to A. So this A corresponds to which simplicial data you choose. Okay? So for example, if you choose this one, uh, then this So this one corresponds to C3. And this one corresponds to C3. And it kind of, it, this is a case where, where A equals 0, so it's this, this coordinate change. But if you try this one, then uh, it, it will change. So in, you see that uh, kind of, in symplectic geometry, we, we don't really kind of, there is no preferred A in, in some sense, right? But, uh, the, in the, I mean, in the previous study of this mirror symmetry, what people do is you consider this kind of tropical degeneration, and then somehow you get a kind of a preferred coordinate change. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, symplectic geometrically, the corresponding lambda Ginsburg model is supposed to be isomorphic. Okay, so this is kind of an intuitive approach, and. Uh, what do I want to say? Uh, right. And then 
also in this picture you can compare, I mean, you, you can look at the matrix factorization. So, for example, you can have a Lagrangian like this. You can have a Lagrangian like this. Then somehow you can look at how, so this, so these uh, define like P plus and P minus. So these data also go through some change so that this P plus and P minus form some kind of bundles over this uh, torical labial. And uh, so that the, these differentials uh, kind of bundle morphisms from here to here and so on. So you can also do this. Uh, OK, so maybe I just uh, the one remark is, so, so, uh, so previously we were working on C3, and we matrix factorization on C3. Now, now what we want is we want to glue two charts. So we want two and glue. And we get toric labial. So this is toric labial uh, Y. And this is kind of global, global potential. And then, uh, so what is, what is matrix factorization of W? Uh, roughly speaking, these are kind of bundles, uh, data of bundles, and then the maps. So that B square is W times identity. But also, what you can do is you can look these data locally. Locally, locally uh, on each chart, on each chart, they are supposed to give this kind of the usual matrix factorization on C3, such that these objects somehow glue well under this coordinate transform. And so this E0 has to glue, E1 has to glue, and D also has to glue. And so that's the kind of global object. And then there is a global kind of BG category of matrix factorization. Uh, this is that Lin and Pomeliano. So uh, they look at kind of matrix, BG matrix, particular matrix factorization of all local charts. And on M1, you, you add the usual D plus uh, the check differential. So check differential. Then you get some kind of BG model of the global matrix factorization. OK, so that's uh, somehow the idea for episode one. But this approach, it is difficult to find, I mean, to answer question number two. So this is good to understand question one, but difficult for question two. So in general, we are going to assume, I mean, use the following technique, so the serial. So this is work in progress. Uh, so, so one, two, three, question one, two, three, holds if uh, there exists alpha. We look at, skip again the flow theory of L2, and there is beta flow complex of L2 L1. Uh, so that M1. find out such that this differential vanishes, which means it's a cycle. So this means it's a cycle. And also try to find beta, which is a cycle, deformed cycle, such that M2 of alpha beta is the identity plus the some M1 of something. And M2 of beta alpha is identity plus then, uh, okay, so that's, that's the condition. So without this, without this uh, deformations, actually this is a kind of well-known fact that such alpha and beta gives, provides isomorphism between two different objects in any category. So, and so this is just a, 
deform, I mean, boundary deformed version. Uh, okay, so let's look at the proof. Uh, so, so we, so, so B1 and B2, uh, like Mark's, I mean, solution spaces of Mark, Margaret and equation. Now we have to go to a space where this B1 and B2 makes sense. I mean, this equation makes sense. And that's, I mean, this equation holds. So that will provide some uh, subspace. And, and uh, identification of potential just follows from the standard equation. So uh, B1, Uh, square is supposed to be W uh, uh, L1, L2, B2, and it's W L1 of B1. So what this means is if you do this twice, then it, it either bubbles off in above or it bubbles off below. And this is kind of constant. I mean, this is potential times. Identity and potential times identity. So that's just this the standard flow identity. And then you put, so this is times identity, and then you put alpha here. So m1, m1, m2, alpha. But this is a cycle, so this is just zero. But this is a w of l2, w of l1. So that means this. Alpha is not zero, so the question has to be zero. The second part, uh, use alpha and beta. So you can use uh, alpha and beta to construct uh, explicit uh, homotopy uh, quasi I mean, natural transformations. Actually, the natural transformation looks actually quite simple. So M1 uh, is something you will be using this MK operation and plugging in alpha somewhere, or beta. Uh, M2 is MK operation, simple MK operation, deformed by these, and then, and then putting in beta. And this turns out to be the required uh, natural transformation. And after some tedious calculation, you can show that actually this, this identity uh, tells us that these two are quasi-somotic functions. <coughs> I, mean, I mean, these two are, I mean, the, the functions are quasi -somotic. And the, for third question, uh, so what, now the situation is the following. So we have this kind of category of x. Matrix factorization of W1, L1. Uh, and then we have description. And then these are quasi isomorphic. Now, uh, then uh, I want to kind of write down the explicit, explicit uh, infinite on top to this global model. And actually, in this case, we can do this. Uh, this so so this, these are these categories. And there is this uh, kind of homotopy, homotopy fiber product of these category due to Killen and Tabauda. Uh, and then this, the, and then you can write this explicit functor, this using the data of FL1, data of FL2, and the natural transformations. So, uh, 
Anyway, so uh, how do we use this? Uh, Maybe one example. Uh, okay, so, uh, so instead of going to all the way, so let me choose this object and choose this object. So anyway, there is very actually interesting point in this example, somehow, uh, I mean, if you look at these two objects, then obviously they do not intersect. So, so you cannot actually talk about whether the functors are isomorphic. But this guy uh, has, I mean, we can deform it to big enough. Right? Then we can actually show that, so, the first one, let me call it L1, and the second one, let me call it L12. Then uh, we can show that they are actually isomorphic, but not in a filtration preserving way. So they are isomorphic, but not uh, filtered. So this is a kind of interesting point. Somehow, so I think, uh, well, I think Xu Chang will discuss more uh, in, the, in the afternoon, but somehow, well, we are looking at C value mirror, but what we should be looking at is this either lambda plus cubed or lambda zero cubed mirror. And then, uh, so, so this is not big enough. So ori the original, Lag for original Lagrangian, so this deformation space is not big enough. So, so we have to go kind of further down, I mean, so to go to negative direction. So, but fortunately, there is an isomorphism which gives the kind of identification of our time spaces and also the isomorphism of functors between them. Uh, so we we can go. So we, so there is there is some kind of isomorphism between these two. So now, so going from here to here, we are kind of going to a kind of different energy level. And then, uh, if you go to a different energy level, then this guy intersects, and then we can. Look at their kind of look at their intersection points. Oops, not this one. This one. There are eight intersection points, <coughs> and then uh, just play this game, find find <coughs> P and Q, and, and so on. And then try to show uh, show the hypothesis of the theorem and and put I mean, the isomorphism of Thank you very much. Everything is clear. Correct. Can you use this uh, Abuada way to 